When you see idolatry, when you see lust and sin, when you see music that's all about violence and glorifying Satan, and you see people loving that music, it's easy to get discouraged. But remember, the Bible said this is exactly what would happen before Jesus returns. It said the world would become godless and people would then hate God and will even one day worship the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist. So everything we're seeing in our world, the evil, don't be surprised by it. The Bible said it would happen. But you know what else the Bible said? It says that before Jesus returns, every nation would hear that he's going to return. And that's exactly why you're hearing this message right now. Jesus is coming back. And those on his side will rise. Those on the other side, well. Godlessness is clearly growing. No one can deny that. And sometimes, as we see in scripture, when wickedness grows, God is known for raising up those like Elijah to call it out. So, let's talk about Elijah. Around 870 BC, in the book of 1st and 2nd Kings, we hear about the prophet Elijah. And this was no ordinary prophet. The power of God rested upon him. When the kings of Israel disobeyed God, Elijah would come onto the scene and whip them into shame. When King Ahab committed idolatry, Elijah was given power to stop the rain and cause drought. Elijah was also given power to heal. There was once a woman whose son had died, and Elijah prayed over the child, and the child came back to life. At one point, Elijah was sitting on a hill, and uh, 50 troops came to him. Elijah called down fire from the sky, and burned them all up. And then another group of 50 came to him. He called down fire from the sky again and burned them up. Elijah had an interesting type of anointing. This is why many refer to him as a warrior prophet. Some prophets just deliver a message. Elijah, on the other hand, delivered a message as well as the wrath of God. Now, why is this significant? Well, the book of Revelation says that the witnesses of God will call down fire from heaven in the end times. And it says the witnesses will stop the rain. And so many theologians argue that the same type of prophetic anointing and power that was on Elijah seems to be the same type of prophetic anointing that will be upon the witnesses. You see, anointings can be transferred. Okay, let's look at something. So, Elijah was a prophet of God who had an extreme anointing of power. Now, Elijah had a devoted follower named Elisha, okay? And in 2 Kings, Elijah and Elisha were walking along a road. And as they were walking, Elijah turned to Elisha and told him that the time for him to go to heaven had come. And, Eli and Elisha was devastated. You know, he loved Elijah. He didn't want Elijah to leave. And Elijah basically let him know that he wasn't about to die, but God was going to come and take him into heaven while he was alive. Like we, this is not something that normally happens. And so before Elijah was taken to heaven, he took off his coat, his mantle, and he struck the water with it. When he struck the water, <laughs> it parted from one side to the other. And then both Elijah and Elisha walked to the other side of the land. I'll never be able to do what you do. You will, Elisha. And after that, Elijah turned to Elisha lets him know that he's about to go to heaven. And before he goes to heaven, 
He says, Alicia, I'm going to give you one final request to ask of me before I go. And so look at how the conversation goes in Second uh, Kings 2, 9. Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And so here in this moment is Alicia's big chance to ask for anything from Prophet Elijah before he goes to heaven. Like whatever you want, I'll give it to you. Just ask. So let's see what Alicia asks for. <laughs> And so Alicia says, please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. Wow. Alicia could have asked for anything, but he says, Elijah, whatever is on you, whatever type of anointing is on you, please let me have it and a double portion of it because I want that type of power. He makes this request, right? He wants a double portion of Elijah's spirit and after he makes that request then out of nowhere just a chariot of fire comes a whirlwind picks elijah up and he's carried to heaven and you can just picture alicia looking up like well i guess that's it my master's my friend is gone my master's gone but as alicia's looking up he notices that elijah left something behind you see, as Elijah was ascending to heaven, he left behind his coat. <laughs> so Elisha picks up the coat. Now, remember, Elisha has no power, right? He's a follower of Elijah, but he has no power. He's not really known as a powerful person at this point. But he sees that Elijah left behind this coat, this mantle. So Elisha, he picks it up and... When he picks it up, he it's like he's thinking, OK, let me just try something here, because remember, Elijah had hit the water with the coat and then the water parted from one side to the other. And they walked both walked through. So Elisha grabs the coat and it's like he's saying, OK, let me let me try something here. So Elisha then hits the water with the coat. And just as Elijah did, the water parted and everybody saw it. Jaws dropped. And when people saw this, this is what they said in Second Kings 2.15. The spirit of Elijah rests upon Elisha. Elijah left behind his coat. And when Elisha got the coat, his mantle, he was clothed in the spirit of Elijah. Now, <laughs> this is this is pretty cool. So Elijah goes to heaven. He leaves behind his coat. Elisha picks it up. Now he has the spirit of Elijah. But remember, the spirit of Elijah is not just any type of anointing. No, the spirit of Elijah is a warrior for God anointing. OK, <laughs> so if you get if you have that type of anointing that comes upon you, mm, that's that's kind of a big thing. So let's look at what Elisha did after he was clothed with this type of anointing. So. In uh, 2 Kings chapter 2, shortly after Elisha received this empowerment, he immediately just started operating in the gift of healing. Verse 22 says that um, Elisha spoke to the land and he spoke to the water and um, he healed it so that it became fruitful. So he immediately had some type of power with that. And then as he continued to walk along this road, um, something interesting happened as he was walking. Uh, take a look at this, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 23. So from there, Elisha went up to Bethel. And as he was walking along the road, some boys came out of the town and jeered at him. They said, get out of here, Baldy. Get out of here, Baldy. And then he turned around, looked at them, and called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of the boys. Um, let's look at this. Let's kind of talk about this here. Okay, so Elisha, he's walking on this road. Some boys come out of this town. I guess they don't like bald guys. Hey, they're making fun of him because he has a bald head, okay? And they said, get out of here, baldy. He didn't like that. He knows that he has the spirit of Elijah on him. He calls a curse on him. Two bears come out. The boys get torn up. 
I don't know if they died. I don't know. But there's two things we can learn from this. Number one, uh, clearly Alicia was bald and he didn't want to be made fun of about that. He, he wasn't having it that day. <laughs> OK, number two, Alicia had the power to not only heal and prophesy, but he had the power to punish. The point is this. When someone is operating in the spirit of Elijah, don't make them mad. That's a warrior spirit. You don't want to mess with someone who is operating in that type of anointing. Elijah, remember, Elijah called down fire from heaven to destroy 50 soldiers, and then he did it again. Elisha had bears come out of the woods. The spirit of Elijah anointing, it doesn't, it doesn't play. The question is, is there any indication that the anointing or spirit of Elijah can still cover people today? Well, let's look at what Malachi says. In Malachi chapter four, it says that before Jesus returns, or really before the Lord comes, Elijah would return. Look what it says, verse five. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. And so this is why many people, even in Jesus's day, they knew about this verse. They knew that Elijah was supposed to come on earth again before Jesus was here. And so when they saw Jesus walking around, people would come up to him and say, you know, Jesus, you're here. So where's Elijah? We know Elijah, he's supposed to come before you, before the Lord shows up. So where's Elijah? We know, we see you, where's he? And look at what Jesus responded to them in Matthew 17, 12. He says, but I tell you, Elijah has already come and they didn't recognize him, but have done to him everything they wished. And in the next verse, it says, then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. Wow. Jesus told them, Elijah, he already came. He came, but not physically, but spiritually through John the Baptist. <laughs> and this is why when John the Baptist was about to be born, Look at what an angel said to his parents, Luke 1 17. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. <laughs> okay, this, this is deep. And, and, and I gotta make this clear. I gotta make this clear. So, because this kind of was talked about in one of the uh, two witnesses documentaries and people have then asked, okay, so was John the Baptist a reincarnation of Elijah? No, I don't think this is saying anything like that. This is talking about something else. You see, John the Baptist was a person just like Elisha who operated in the spirit of Elijah, in the anointing of Elijah. You see, even though Elijah went to heaven, when he dropped his coat, what happened? Elisha picked it up and then that same spirit, that same anointing that was on Elijah was transferred to Elisha. So just like how Elijah was still in heaven while Elisha had power, Elijah was still in heaven when John the Baptist had power because John the Baptist also, according to Luke 117 and Jesus, was operating in the same type of spirit and anointing, the same mantle of Elijah. Why? Why did, why did John the Baptist have to operate in that type of anointing? To fulfill prophecy. You see, when the Bible makes a statement, it has to be fulfilled and God will see to it that it is fulfilled. Because in Malachi chapter four, verse five, it clearly says that before the Lord comes, Elijah must come first. And so to satisfy that prophecy, the spirit of Elijah had to come. It had to rest upon a messenger to prepare people for the Lord. Now, John the Baptist operated in the spirit 
of Elijah for Jesus' first coming. But we know Jesus is coming again. And the great and dreadful day of the Lord is still to come. And so to satisfy that prophecy, we know that it is likely that the spirit of Elijah must come again. Because as the prophecy in Malachi says, whenever the Lord comes, the spirit of Elijah must first come to do what? Prepare the way. And this is why before Jesus returns for the final time, it says the two witnesses will do what? Stop the rain, cause fire to fall, create plagues. Why? To prepare people for the coming of the Lord. The spirit of Elijah is coming back. Some people say that um, perhaps Elijah himself will physically return and do all of these things as one of the witnesses. And hey, and if you share that view, great, you know, share more of your perspective in the comments. That's what we're doing. We, we learn from each other. Now, personally, I think you can gather from some of our previous